us to our knees one way or another if we'll get willingly on our knees and pray. You know, the old sign travails. She, she is barren. She cannot bring forth until she travails. I said, God, cause a travailing spirit to get up on my people. Lord, that we will cry, Lord. That we will howl, Lord. It's a time that God's people learn how to weep and howl. I tell you, I remember a time. And it was such a birthing, too, during the time of the 70s. But my goodness, everywhere you went, the altars were full. And of the children of God, weeping and howling for lost souls, that God would birth them into the kingdom. And what did he do? He saved people by their droves. All over this nation and the nations of the world, his word went out with such a power and authority in the name of Jesus. And that's what God's trying to wake up the church today, is that for them to get back on their knees and weep and howl. There is power in prayer. There is power in prayer. That's the reason Paul exhorted the people all the time. Pray always. Pray always. That's the reason that the, the you know, that's the reason that a lot of people, even in this ministry, got to going around and saying that people were preaching their dedications and, and, and preaching that, you know, they had to do the works of prayer and fasting and stuff to be saved. That is a lie of the devil. A lie of the devil. And I don't care who gets up and says different. Because I'm telling you one thing God wants us to pray. If you love the Father, you're going to want to talk to Him. No, you don't do it for salvation's sake. But you do it because you love Him. Because you want to walk in Him. Hallelujah. When you love someone, you want to be with them. That just shows how much of the love of the Lord has departed from the church. And I'm not talking about a building. I'm talking about the children of God. It's time that we return back to our first love and do our first works over if need be to get where we need to be with God. I said, Lord, help us, God, awaken us. Lord, whatever it takes, uh, if it takes great devastation upon this land to wake up your people, then, Lord, bring it on, Lord, uh, because we need you, Lord, more than we need houses and lands. Uh, Lord, we need you, Father, more than we need the luxuries of this life. Uh, I tell you what, if people could just really true. See what luxury is. It is knowing the Lord for themselves. Knowing Him. Knowing it On God's side. And I said the ministers of God are going to stand before Him on Judgment Day. And I, they're going to be they're not going to be guiltless because uh, that they want to go away of uh, popularity, wanting people to love them and like them. But I'm telling you one thing, God has got a real that will go forth and preach it and lay it down just like it is. Uh, why? Because they truly love the people. They're not worried about popularity. Of course everybody wants to be liked. Uh, but I tell you what, I will not trade off my Jesus for popularity. I will not trade off His Word uh, just to be liked by people. But I tell you one thing, uh, the prophets of God, uh, when they went forth to preaching and teaching to the people and saying, thus saith the Lord, it was always a hard word. Always a hard word. Trying to wake the people up out of foolishness. Trying to wake the people up out of the sins uh, that ha they have so easily fell into. But I tell you what, there's a people that love God at all costs. Uh, it doesn't make no difference to them uh, what price they have to pay. They want to walk the way of the Lord. Uh, they want to stand in His righteousness. And I tell you what, there is a people, there's a remnant out of a remnant that God is raising up in this hour that will take this end time revival. I tell you what, if the old uh, Christians that's been in this way for years and years and years. If they don't watch it, they're going to miss this visitation that God is bringing. Just because they are set in their ways. Set in their ways. Thinking that they're all right. And that they're doing God's service. When all alone that they're walking in iniquity. Walking in iniquity. I get emails from ministers that are bound in pornography bound in all this type of lasciviousness and sin and still getting in the pulpit. I tell you what, the judgments of God is returning back to the house of God and it's going to start right there in the pulpit. There's going to be many that's going to fall dead. Why? Because they are saying that they are God's ministers when in reality they are not. Hallelujah. 
Shana Brasa. Mandra Bahukura Bahaya Elibikusa. I feel that the wrath of God is stirred up. Yes, God is love. But he is a just God. He is a just God. He would have to repent to Solomon Gomorrah if he let all this homosexuality go. If he just turned his a deaf ear to it. But I tell you what, and these ministers that'll go along and let them get up in the pulpits and saying that they're saved, I tell you what, they're going to answer to God for it because they are standing as God's leaders and people are following after them. That's the reason Paul said, know them that you follow. Know their lives, the end of their lives. Know them that you follow. Hallelujah. And it's time that God's people know them that labor among them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read some more of this scripture. I tell you what, but I can't help it. The Spirit of God is just stirred up in me to a degree. I don't make no excuses for God's word. If people are offended from something I do, then I ask forgiveness. But I will not apologize for the word of God. If people are offended in the word, then so be it. And I just pray that somehow God will have mercy. Hallelujah. For thus saith the Lord God, my people went down a fourth time into Egypt to sojourn there. And the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord. And my name continually every day is blessing. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doeth speak. Behold, it is I. I tell you what, this world and this earth is fixing to know God is God. They're fixing to know God. Hallelujah. I tell you, you've got all these atheists that go around saying that God is not real. Saying that there is no God. But I tell you what, I haven't known an atheist yet that when he didn't get on his death bell, bed, that he did not cry out to God. Hallelujah. I tell you what, when it comes down to your life, then you realize there is a holy creator. Hallelujah. No matter what you profess while you're walking on this land. But I tell you what, I believe with all my heart that there are the true prophets, the true apostles, the true pastors and evangelists and teachers are going to stand up in the power of God's Spirit and they're going to speak, thus saith the Lord. And it don't matter about how the people... I, I tell you what, there's going to be many that will even come up and rin and gnash at you with their teeth because they don't want to hear what you have to say. That's a time that... We're we're living in. We're living in a godless generation that don't want no part of God. But I tell you what, there is a people. There is a small people. You know, Elijah, when he run from Jezebel, you know, he got up under that tree and he said, Lord, just kill me. I'm the only one left. He said, Elijah, I have thousand, uh, seven thousand that have not bowed their knee unto Baal or even kissed his cheek. God has a set aside people in this day. Even though it looks like we're very few in number. But I tell you what, there's going to come a gathering. There's going to come a gathering. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, I just want to be a part of that gathering. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, it's time. You know, just like, you know, the Bible says that the spirit of Elijah would turn, return in the last days. Hallelujah. You know what the, the spirit of Elijah is? You know what Elijah was known for? He was called the prophet of fire. Hallelujah. The prophet of fire. Why? Because he called down fire from heaven. Hallelujah. That day when there was a showdown between the prophets of Baal and the only true living God. And I tell you what, the true living God, he answered by fire. He licked up everything around there, all the water that was in the gully, all the sacrifice. Even he consumed the altar. Hallelujah. You know, God is a consuming fire. It's time that people fear God. You know, there's no fear of God anymore in this land. 
you know, they turn their nose up at God. They speak blessings against Him. They talk all kind of mess. They don't have no fear of Him. They don't have no fear of coming up on a place that's known as a, a place of worship anymore and worry about what they throw out there. In other words, they, they try to come up here and push and pour out as much as they can of filth, uh, you know, showing that they're disregard for the Spirit of God. But I tell you what, God Almighty, He's getting sick of it. God Almighty, He's going to take a stand against this evil and He's going to drive it back. Uh, I tell you what, this is a day just when Moses come up out of the mountain and when he come down with the Ten Commandments and the people were sinning and running after false gods and dancing, being drunk and fornicating and adultery, they were falling in all kind of sin. You know, that day Moses, he said, them that are with me, he said, you come over to 